Am I the asshole for not wanting my husband's brother to be in the delivery room? I'm currently 31 weeks with twins, a boy and a girl. My husband and I are both 21, and we're trying for a baby for about a year before we fell pregnant. I've had a pretty rough pregnancy, and my brother-in-law is a medical student, so he's taken quite a lot of interest in my pregnancy and future delivery. We've always gotten on well. He's 24. I've known my husband's family since we were children so we've pretty much grown up together. A few days ago, my husband told me that my brother-in-law had expressed an interest in being there whilst I gave birth, mainly due to it being beneficial from an educational standpoint to see a natural multiples birth, which is what I'm planning for. I know things can change on that front but hoping for that. Also so my husband can have support as I'll have my mom. Worth mentioning that our hospital doesn't have a restriction on the amount of people who can be in the delivery room. I said absolutely not, there is no way in hell I am allowing that. I'm not even overly keen on allowing my husband to watch me go through that, let alone his brother. He said it'd be good experience for him and his degree and I said that as much as I supported him, my experience of having a pleasant birth was my priority. He got defensive and said he should be allowed to have a support person to, which I suppose I do understand, but I really just feel uncomfortable about it all. He said it was just as much his right as it was mine to have someone there to support him. It basically turned into a huge argument, with his brother and mom being dragged into it too. Am I the asshole? Update thank you all so much for taking the time to comment and message me, I really support it. I would have responded to more but it's been quite overwhelming. My husband and I have discussed pretty much everything and decided that he and my brother-in-law will not be in the delivery room. He's not exactly elated but agreed that my wants are the priority. He will be in the waiting room with everyone else. Thanks again. Not the asshole I am actually creeped out that your brother-in-law even wants to be there. There is just something so wrong about it. You're the one who is about to have her vagina ripped apart while two humans shove their head and shoulders through it. What you say goes. Do not give in on this. Congratulations on having twins and I wish you a smooth labor and delivery. Not the asshole tell him that if he is willing to get naked, lay on the dining room table, grab his ankles, and let your dad stare at his asshole for an hour then you will think about letting his brother in the delivery room. Birth is hard enough. Don't let him bully you into this. The only person who is important during birth is the one doing it and as a doctor his brother should know that a patient's desires trump her extended families. Not the asshole. I wouldn't want my brother-in-law to see anything come out of my vagina. Talk about awkward. Your comfort is to be put above your BIL's need for experience. Your husband also doesn't need a support person, unless he is also having two actual humans come out of him. Not the asshole. When he is pushing a baby out his vagina, then he can have a support person there. His job is support not bringing in bystanders. Not the asshole. Birth is a not a spectator sport. You are not an educational dummy for your bill. Multiple births are not so rare that he won't have another chance. Tell your doctor in no uncertain terms that you specifically do not want him in the room. Not the asshole. I'm a PA student, one more month to go, and if a patient asks to not see me or have me in the room, I'm happy to oblige. It's your medical care, you decide who is in the room. Not the asshole. Your husband does not need a support person. He is not the one giving birth. He is the support person. You are the only one who gets a say in who is in that room. This is your medical procedure. Your husband needs to grow up and realize that this is not about him. He has to put you first, not his brother or himself. Not the asshole your brother-in-law can wait in the waiting room with everyone else. Birthing is a very beautiful, emotional experience and it can be very difficult, and you don't want an audience to your privates. Brother-in-law can have his own experience with his own partner someday. Am I the asshole for sternly telling my wife I get to invite whoever I want whenever I want to my house? Am I the asshole for sternly telling my wife I get to invite whoever I want whenever I want to my house? My wife is a stam while I work full time. We have two kids that I help do percent 50 of their care while she handles cooking and cleaning and the other percent 50 of childcare as well. I'm sociable by nature and am fast at making friends whether at work or outside of it. The problem my wife has is that I invite friends and co-workers, guests, over every few days to my house for dinner or lunch. Restaurants aren't an option now due to budget. My wife said she has to cook for my guests though I never tell her to cook this or cook that nor ever complain about her choice of meals because it depends. 
The guests eat whatever she feels like cooking yet she complains that she has to cook for extra people which takes effort and time and also since I sit with the guests then she has to serve them by bringing coffee, preparing the table, etc. Since I told her I don't do these chores but I thought that since this is her area of responsibilities then where's the problem? I invited few guests for Thanksgiving, six people and when she found out she lost it saying I should have consulted her first. I said there was no need because they'd just eat whatever she cooked no problem but she said she wasn't going to agree to cook large portion and for six extra people aside from serving them and handling hosting that is too much for her. I told her she was making a big deal out of it and should just stop freaking out over few extra plates and glasses and whatnot. She said she didn't agree but then I eventually had the guests over and after they left she started yelling at me saying she was not mine and my guest server and that I should stop having them over that is when I told her very sternly that it's my house and I get to invite whoever I want whenever I please and called her unreasonable to react like that instead of being welcoming to the people who wanted to spend time with us unlike her family who cut us off completely but she shouted that she was done with being on my back and call and having to be forced to take care of my guests in terms of serving and cooking just because it's her part of chores and told me if I want to continue to have guests over then I'll have to step up and cook for them myself which I thought was quite rude and unfair of her. We went back and forth in this argument and she then stopped talking to me and started giving me the silent treatment making me feel like I'd committed some sin by having guests over. Info I just wanted to explain that my wife's main issue isn't about cooking itself but having to cook extra for the guests which is understandable and I tried to compromise by suggesting we set time limits for when my guests visit to avoid having to include them in dinners and whatnot and also suggested we limit the frequency of those visits but she stated she will still have an issue with it and gave me the options of either handling the hosting myself or just completely stop having them over or take them out to restaurants but then restaurants consume money and she was the one who advised against going to restaurants. Also, the reason I said it's my house I meant that it's my house too and not as if it's mine alone or hers alone. My wife has huge part in it and she definitely gets a say in what goes on and what doesn't and we don't usually disagree except for this issue. You are the asshole. You're not just having guests over. You're having people over every couple nights? I don't blame her. I wouldn't want to host and cook for double or triple the amount of adults every three or four days either. Especially since you're not helping. Those are your friends. Your wife doesn't run a restaurant. Quit treating her like one. Major you are the asshole. Surely no one is this disrespectful and manages to stay married. You are the asshole. Somehow I believe your wife would not have the option to do whatever she wants in her own house, the same way you do. I further suspect your wife has been abused by her family of origin as well as being considered a personal servant to you and your friends. I hope she finds happiness somewhere. You are the asshole. She is your wife, not your servant. Either you cook for and clean up after your friends, or treat her with basic respect and speak with her prior to having people in your shared home. Since I sit with the guests then she has to serve them by bringing coffee, preparing the table, etc. Since I told her I don't do these chores. Congratulations Captain, you've just been promoted to Major Awe. You are the asshole. This is your wife's home as much as it is yours, this is not Nando's. Inviting random people around all the time without agreement is shitty. The fact you expect her to wait on them and serve them is just mind-blowing. Please be trolling. Secondly, get your ass off the sofa and cook yourself. If you want to bring people over then you wait on them hand and foot. I don't even need to dive into the Thanksgiving nonsense because it just makes it worse. You want the truth? This sub can't handle the truth. Because rule 1 exists. Defo got the you are the asshole vibes here. If you are having people over, fine. But it is your responsibility to cook clean and work everything out as it is your friends, not hers. Why should she have to clean up after your mess, especially when she claims it was unannounced? It's all about compromise when you decide to share your life with someone, so you absolutely should be talking this through with her beforehand. I think people calling for divorce are unreasonable but you need to get your act straight my dude. You are the asshole. You are the asshole x1000. Do you also sternly tell to walk six steps behind you in public, with her head bowed? You are the asshole you should ask her before inviting Payope that you expect her to cater for. In fact you should ask her anyway because it is her house too. And hash x 200 b. I told her very sternly. She is not a child. And hash x 200 b. You are extremely rude and inconsiderate to her and I am glad that she is standing up to you. And hash x 200 b. I thought was quite rude and unfair of he. Your guests that you didn't even bother to tell her you had invited and hash x 200 b. 
and hash x200b. Making me feel like I'd committed some sin by having guests over. You know that isn't why she is upset. And you should feel bad, because you are mistreating your wife. Am I the asshole for refusing to pay my husband for the burnt beef steak I cooked for him? My husband 30 and I 32 keep our finances separate and we do not share anything until and unless there's an agreement. He wants it this way and I'm okay with that although he can be strict with what's his and what's mine. Anyways, two days ago he brought home a raw steak cut and asked me to take time off work, IWFH, to cook it for him and I said okay since he was a bit sick and exhaluated. I prepared the steak and added all ingredients together then put it inside the oven then stopped by the bedroom where he was lying in bed playing on his phone and told him I had to go back to work and the steak was in the oven and he needed to turn it off in exactly 10 minutes so it wouldn't get overcooked since he hates it overcooked. 40 minutes go by and my husband rushes in freaking out telling me he just checked on the steak and it was completely burnt. I ask why he didn't turn off the oven 10 minutes after I notified him and he says to me that he was busy harvesting the strawberries in the game he was playing. I just shrug and tell him this is on him then for being on his phone distracted and letting the meat burn but he says to me, well, no shit it's your fault because when you start something, you finish it and you were supposed to finish cooking the steak. I meanly remind him I agreed to take valuable time off work to cook for him when I didn't have to and when he was playing on his phone so he should be grateful but gets more upset and says that I need to pay dollar dollar for the steak since he bought it from the butcher so it's high quality unlike the supermarket but I said no this is not my responsibility but he then tells me that yes, yes it is and that I should think of it as if I took dollar dollar from his salary and burned it not to mention that he gets no dinner therefore I owe him. I lash at him telling him no and to get out of my office so I could finish my work since my time is valuable as well as his precious steak and he was wasting it. He keeps insisting I pay for the price of steak and even said I was wrong for refusing to take responsibility and correct my mistake and just pay because he wants to buy another cut of steak but does not plan on using his money again because why should he? He wasn't the one who cooked and let the steak burn. Am I the asshole? Edit to explain that separate finances is his idea and the reason for that is that he was married to a woman, out of the USA, and she took all his money and belongings once they got separated. In an illegal way of course thus he now feels uncomfortable to share finances with another partner which like I said is okay with me since I have many married friends with separate finances who are living happily. Dot. Edit to wow. Too many people on here commenting and I can't read every single comment but I just wanted to say that I showed my husband the thread and he wanted to tell you guys something but I didn't let him touch the phone and type by himself because I know how rude he can be online so I'm just presenting a more civil version of what he wanted to say. He says that he thinks the comments he's seen are being unfair to him and completely pee-shing aside the fact that he a paid money for this steak cut and b that I agreed to cook and so he thinks I should have finished the favor. He also says that I left out the part where I suggested he get a cheaper steak from the supermarket, I did. Which was offensive because he spent time driving to the butchers and money to buy a fresh steak and eating at the steakhouse is expensive. Also he says to the top comment that he doesn't like freaking strawberries that is why he can't eat them. I think that's enough. He's pressuring me to give him my phone so he could type out what he wants to say but I believe all the relevant info is here. I'll update if possible. Not the asshole. Tell him to eat the freaking strawberries he was busy harvesting. Edit. Wow, this is crazy. Thanks everybody. Oh boy. Where to start? 1. Incapable of recognizing he made a mistake. 2. Incapable of completing a simple task because he was doing something inconsequential. 3. Trying to flip blame on you. 4. Incapable of acknowledging the importance of your work and your time, much less respecting it. 5. I'm less bothered by your division of finances, and more concerned by how he penny pinches when it benefits him. Honestly, it seems you should go for a walk by yourself and take a step back. To carefully reevaluate what other red flags you have ignored. And if this way of life is worth it. Don't plan on potential, plan based of what's already there. Edit. I forgot my judgment, not the asshole for op. Edit 2. Ah, thank you for the award fellow Redditors, even though I don't know what they mean open mouth smile. When you divorce this strawberry harvesting ungrateful for your efforts and unable to tell time aficionado of fine beef products, you have to get the best lawyer you can afford, because he is going try so hard to nickel and dime you, make him sorry. Not the asshole and I am sorry you are unappreciated. Go out and buy yourself a personal sized fine steak. And make it for yourself. And don't share. You are not the asshole, do you need a good divorce attorney's number? 
I only ask because it sounds like the husband has gone bad and needs to be replaced. Info. Why are you even married? Not the asshole. Are you sure you're married? He sounds like a shitty roommate. You don't share. Anything? Unless there's an agreement? Are you married to this man? He seems more like your roommate with a list of rules. That aside, his fault. Not the asshole. Don't start something you can't finish. He broke that the moment he bought a steak for himself but wouldn't cook it himself. Not the asshole, and this guy sounds exhausting. Am I the asshole for not agreeing to be my school sign language interpreter? For context. Both of my parents are deaf so I speak fluent Auslan, Australian sign language. This is known by all of my teachers plus the principal because I act as an interpreter for my parents during parent-teacher meetings. My high school has quite a few ho, deaf students maybe 20 out of like 2,000 students. The other day my name was on the school notices asking me to come see the principal at break time. When I went he asked me to wait and called in one of the special ed teachers. After she arrived they asked me to take a seat and told me that they were very excited to be introducing a new kind of inclusion program in the school. The principal then said something like, Op, we know that you're very proficient in Auslan. We would love to make the school more inclusive and thought that you could work on school parades, school assemblies, as an interpreter for our host students. Honestly, I'm really not keen about this idea. Interpreting is exhausting, not to mention I would hate to stand up in front of the whole school at every assembly. I told him that I thought it was a great idea to have an interpreter, but that I'm not really interested in doing that. My principal seemed understanding and let me go back to class. On the final period of the day, however, I was called out of class by the special ed teacher that had been in the room with the principal and me. When I stepped out the first thing she said to me was. I'm pretty disappointed in you, op. I asked about what and she said. For not taking initiative. You have the power to help our host students by assisting them to join in school activities and you're not using it. This is a public school, op. We can't afford an interpreter. I think that you're being pretty selfish. This honestly really annoyed me and this is where I might be the asshole. I said that if she wanted an Auslan interpreter so badly why didn't she learn the language herself? And that she isn't entitled to my help. She says, you're being really immature, op. All I was asking for is a little help. I told her that I had already said no and asked her why she felt the need to pull me out of class to ask the same question she had seen me answer like three hours ago. She says, okay, we're done talking if you can't be mature about this. I say, great, and walk back inside my classroom. She catches the door as it closes and says loudly to my teacher. I'm very disappointed in her, Ms. X, very disappointed. For the rest of the day people asked me why I had gotten in trouble. Am I the asshole for refusing to be the interpreter? It's probably true that our school can't afford one. Too long did not read. My principal asked if I would act as an interpreter for ho kids at every school assembly as I'm fluent in Auslan. I said no and was later berated by another teacher for not agreeing to do so. Op, we can't afford an interpreter. Not the asshole. They are expecting you do undertake a task that is hard work for free because they can't afford to pay a professional. There is zero long-term planning here because you won't be a student at that school forever. What are they planning to do when you move on? They could explore other options like speech-to-text apps if they can't afford to hire someone. Out of interest, does your special ed teacher not speak sign language? NTA and the teacher who did that to you was very unprofessional trying to guilt you into doing it. Odd tell the principal. Not the asshole. Children shouldn't translate for the parents. In Sweden this is actually regulated by law so when I worked as a teacher I had to book translators for meetings with some parents. Was it difficult when there was an emergency? Yes, but the law is the law. There should be public fundings the school could apply for so they can afford a translator. I've had both kids from other countries and kids that was ho in my classroom. The school made a lot of adjustments when I had a ho student. But like I said, it's the law. And I agree with you, a public school with several ho students should have staff that speak sign language. Not the asshole and honestly the behavior of that teacher is disturbing. The heavy guilt trip was very manipulative and I definitely document that conversation with the principal and affirm that while flattered you're passing and expect to not be asked again. Not the asshole. You're supposed to be attending the assembly, not working it. This is a paid professional job that requires two interpreters to trade off frequently because it is tiring. I find it interesting that they brought you in the office to make a verbal request. I bet if you asked them to put it in writing on letterhead they'd start to backtrack on this. 
I'm not certain how your school system works, but I would lodge a formal complaint with a higher up to prevent retaliation. Also, your country might have laws requiring the school to pay for interpreters and they're in violation. Whatever it is, it's not your responsibility. Best of luck. Op. Report that teacher. What the hell is wrong with her? Being an interpreter is a job and if you don't want to work that job for free, then it's entirely inappropriate to make a scene to try and pressure you into it. Tell your parents what happened. Tell your principal. Tell the school board. That's inexcusable, regardless of what good it might do for anyone. If they want an interpreter, they can find somebody who wants to do it for free, or find the money. Absolutely not the asshole. Not the asshole. You are a student and it is totally unprofessional to try and strongarm you into doing a job that a professional should be being paid for. If you wanted to volunteer because it looked good of a college application, that's different, but you very definitely said no. I wonder if there is a funding issue or there might be. Maybe the SPED teacher has been told that she must learn sign unless she can find someone to assist. I think this is why she is trying to shame you into helping. Then possibly having you teach others as part of a club, so they will have other helpers when you leave the school. There is definitely something nefarious going on with that teacher. I suggest telling your parents about all of this so they can go to the principal about her harassing you. Op, as a registered teacher in Australia, strongly recommend you have your parents make a written complaint to your state's education minister about this teacher. Their behavior is appalling and the principal will be made to deal with and discipline the teacher if it goes to a ministerial level. Edit. Editing to add due to a comment below about possibly needing to change schools due to the fallout. In my experience, there will be no fallout for the student or parents due to a ministerial being sent. I've usually seen the opposite happen. Ministerials can be a big nuisance for the principal. They will not want to do anything to the student that causes the parents to go back to the minister's office.